Let's bring in Zeke Miller, White House correspondent for Time Magazine and CBSN contributor. Okay, Zeke, we are hearing the president's leaning away from honoring these U.S. commitments, but any window into what the president's thinking is and how he may have come to this decision? You know, this is something that he promised to his supporters on the campaign trail, and that was always something that had been um, weighing over him throughout this and sort of was also guiding the folks like Steve Bannon, uh, Scott Pruitt, and others in the administration who were pushing the president to lean in this direction. Um, this was on a, the whiteboard in Steve Bannon's office of all the fulfilled and unfulfilled promises, and it had been a big unfulfilled one. If he does make this move, and this is what, it, you know, at the same reporting you have that he's been telling people in aides to prepare this, but the actual mechanics of how he's going to do it um, are still uh, to be determined. Um, you know, but if they can check that one off, that would be a big uh, show of success for their supporters. This is something that is unpopular with a lot of Republicans um, in Washington and, and across the country. So uh, there's a letter from Republican uh, members of the Senate saying they, were, they would be supportive of this as well. So all of those things together, I think, has uh, you know, impacted the president's uh, thinking over the past couple of weeks. So if we pull out of this deal, Zeke, we're going to join countries like Nicaragua and S Syria, who are non-participants. So what does the president have to gain? You were mentioning that there are Republicans who don't want this deal. Is that not enough pressure to put on the president? Is this pretty much where he wants to go? I mean, yeah, I mean, this is where, um, you know, the, the, this is what he was elected on. This is, you know, that, that, this is what he's going to be able to go around and tell, tell his voters. You, you, I told you I would do this, now here I did, and, you know, six months later I did it. Um, is that a satisfactory answer to, the, to you know, even the, the Republicans on Capitol Hill who like the Paris Agreement, the business community, Democrats, um, and just the Americans around the country who are concerned about the environment? Um, it might not be. The president, you know, can't just, and you know, yeah, he can just pull out of the Paris Climate Accord, but that would be very similar to the Donald Trump we saw in, in late January when he did the same thing with TPP. Uh, if this White House is trying to, uh, you know, and we've seen no indication of this yet, but if they, if they are trying to sort of communicate to those who might still like the Paris Climate Accord, um, he, they would have to come out and say and argue why you know, they are still trying to protect the, the environment. And that's, you know, we have not seen any sort of messaging along those lines from this White House yet. That would be some way for them to at least temper uh, the, the outrage that uh, is, um, is already building. And meanwhile, Zeke, the congressional investigations into Russia meddling and possible collusion are still picking up. So Flynn says, Michael Flynn says that he's going to turn over some documents. Uh, he was in that December meeting with Jared Kushner and the Russian ambassador. Do you get the sense that Michael Flynn and Jared Kushner are being pitted against each other? I mean, it really is too soon to tell. I mean, certainly the subject sub of, of that meeting um, it is, uh, uh, is, is uh, something that congressional investigators as well as the FBI uh, spe uh, the special counsel, uh, Bob Mueller, want uh, have answers to. Um, we have not, I mean, it, it's, there's yet to be any sense that sense in it. it or the, 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 Michael Flynn's in a very different boat than, than Jerry Kushner right now. Michael, Michael Flynn didn't fill out his SF-86 forms, didn't disclose federal, uh, uh, himself as a federal agent uh, on behalf of Turkey until six months after the fact. He's in a very different boat, faces far higher stakes and is in greater jeopardy. Jared Kushner, um, there are a lot of questions and not a lot of, you know, there a lot, there's a lot of smoke and not a lot of fire. So they, there might be small elements to try to pin, the, you know, sort of pit them against each other. But right now, at least in the information that we know, Michael Flynn's in far, far, in a far worse off of situation than Jared Kushner. And yet again, we keep hearing the president call this investigation a witch hunt while defending former campaign advisor Carter Page. Is there any advice that you know of that his legal team is giving him to try and keep his distance from all of this? Um, certainly, um, you know, the, the White House and the president himself had, had tried to create as much distance from Carter Page as possible over the last six, nine months. They kept saying over and over again that, you know, the Carter Page, you know, they don't even know who Carter Page is. And here is the president responding to news reports saying, oh, Carter Page doesn't want to testify. He seemed awfully familiar with, the, with that, with uh, who Carter Page uh, is um, and his involvement with his own campaign. Um, but certainly his, his team has been telling him, you know, maybe don't tweet about Russia so much. And the, the president doesn't necessarily listen to his team or in, in, in actuality rarely listens to some members of his team when they tell him please don't tweet about this they beg him they implore him please don't and here and he comes out and, and, and sort of keeps it alive because he believes that it, it fires up his own supporters mm. Zeke Miller always love when you can join us Zeke from the White House thank you sir thank you